that can be raised an analog signal to power n as shown here. So basically the in comes in as shown here at the input of the circuit as a signal, as a voltage. And then we want to raise that to power n as shown here n is a positive number. It doesn't need to be an integer. So how is that possible? This uh, simple circuit uh, is implemented using five op amps and uh, four bipolar junction transistor or BJT. And it's very interesting in the sense that it can achieve this task, though with limitation, but in a sort of not complex format. So let's take a look at the circuit, how it's working. This is op amp 1 and this is op amp 2. Make the assumption that all the op amps are properly biased with the proper supply voltages, let's say just making it up 5 volt and negative 5 volt. And uh, given the circuit as it is, uh, you can see that the negative feedback is properly set up for the op amps. So let's make the assumption that op amps are properly biased and mutual short is valid for all the op amps. And as a result, we are saying the voltage at positive input terminal is equal to voltage at negative input terminal uh, because of virtual short. So for example, voltage at positive terminal here is zero volt, obviously, and therefore uh, virtual ground happen and voltage at negative is at zero volt. So what is the consequence of that? The current R that is flowing through this resistor, this current, should go this way toward the collector of the transistor number one because that current cannot go to input of op amp because input of op amp in linear region or ideal op amp has practically infinite impedance. So what is that current I1, let's say? The current I1 is simply V in minus zero, the two voltages across this resistor, divided by R. So it's just simply V in divided by R. Okay, so that's I1. All right, so that's I1. The same thing we can say about current I2, because this current I2, as you can see, can only flow like this toward the collector of transistor number T2. So this current I2 uh, can be just computed as simple as saying that I2 is equal to 5 volt minus, again, virtual sh short resulting virtual ground on negative terminal 0 volt. And as a result, you can see that Across 5R, we have 5 and 0. So 5 minus 0 divided by 5R. So we get um, I2, just 1 over R. Of course, I'm not mentioning about dimensions. Dimension is amp. So, but its value is 1 over R. Um, and the same thing on top. It's amp. Okay, so we found I1 and I2. Now, the benefit of this approach is if we refer to this point as, let's say, V1 for the time being, this point at the output of op amp 2, let's say V2 so that it's not confusing. V2 at the output of op amp 2, V2 happened to be at the base of transistor T1. So from the base of T1, you can see that the emitter of uh, transistor 1 and emitter of transistor 2, they are the same. So, and you can see that the base of T transistor T2 is grounded. So what I can say is um, from the base of transistor 1, V2 minus VBE1 is equal to um, 0 minus VBE2, simply a KVL, so Kirchhoff voltage law. All right, uh, V2 is uh, a variable that we want to find, is VBE1 mi minus VBE2 as a result. VBE1 is uh, eta VT, natural logarithm, I transistor 1 divided by saturation current of transistor. Eta is ideality factor. Uh, so that's, that's, so I'm going to write it down here. Uh, so eta is ideality factor, is a value between 1 and 2. Doesn't matter for us because it's going to cancel out from both sides. And it's just a matter of the fact that if you're dealing with BJT, eta is closer to 2. And VT is just a famous uh, thermal voltage of VJT transistor, or let's say PN junction, and that is uh, just KT over Q, where K is the Boltzmann constant, Q as, let me show you, so uh, K is the Boltzmann constant uh, here, and uh, Q is the charge of electron, uh, and T is the temperature of junction, or junction of transistor in Kelvin. We make the assumption that all the transistors shown in this circuit, they are 
uh, similar to each other junction wise they are on the same substrate they are having the same junction property so they are very close to each other copy paste of each other that's the assumption about transistors it's important so that we can uh, make the simplification that uh, we have okay so with that in mind b2 is written and uh, what i can write is i know um, i know i1 as in equation 1 and equation 2 i found i1 and i2 so I was about to write uh, this is VBE1 here and for VBE2 let me change the color so that it's uh, sort of uh, easier for for us to follow what's going on so this one is VBE1 okay and uh, I'm going to change the color soon and minus VBE2 which is minus eta VT ln of course I2 for the transistor number 2 divided by Is. Okay, so the part that I said I'm going to change the color is this part. So if I change this color to say black so that it's easier to see, then from this I get V2 is eta Vt and then natural logarithm. So we are subtracting two log again. Eta VT is assumed to be the same for both transistors because they are having the same type of junction and same temperature. So an IS equal to IS. So then ln minus ln becomes ln of input argument divided to, by each other. And now I'm going to use equation. I'm going to use equation one and two to conclude that V2 is eta VT, and then ln substitute for i1 from equation 1 v in over r and substitute for i2 from equation 2 1 over r so these go cancel out each other and as a result i get to this final outcome here that i want which says v2 is equal to eta vt and ln v in so uh, what happens is we get to uh, the nice outcome that V2 is uh, some proportional value to, some, to the natural logarithm of V. Okay, so that's equation number three, let's say. Okay, so we found V2. Now, the next step is uh, from V2, this portion of the circuit is simply an inverting amplifier nothing else a very simple inverting amplifier with the positive terminal for op amp 3 is grounded and since we are assuming that op amp is properly biased working linear region virtual short is valid for the op amp so therefore the negative terminal is also as virtual ground so zero uh, this is simply an inverting amplifier for op amp 3 we can say i'm gonna just delete this this point is v3 i can say op amp 3 uh, is inverting amplifier simple inverting amplifier and by that I mean just for the uh, for making sure that I'm not making any assumption you can quickly write uh, v3 as a function of v2 in inverting amplifier which says v3 is just uh, minus nr this resistor divided by this resistor which is r so uh, you can also make this by the way a potentiometer or a variable resistor so that you can change the value of n uh, so that uh, you can play with uh, changing the uh, what you're raising to the power watt. So basically you change the exponent of the exponentiation in this process. This is an exponent exp uh, raising to the power n for Vn. So V3 is minus nr divided by r times V2, uh, which basically means uh, V3 is minus n times V2. But uh, just so that we mentioned about KCL, effectively a Kirchhoff current law or law of preservation of current is written at this node. Uh, so KCL here, which says this current that is coming in, which is V2 minus 0 divided by R, should be equal to this current that is going out, which is 0 minus V3 divided by NR. Uh, so just as a review, KCL or Kirchhoff current law or law of preservation of current that says current coming in should be equal to the total current going out, uh, is saying V2 minus 0 divided by R should be equal to 0 minus V3 divided by NR. And this is exactly giving us, this whole thing is exactly giving us what we got here. So um, 
v3 is equal to negative n v2. Okay, so uh, what is the next step? The next step is uh, we found v3. So as a result, the next step is we have to uh, consider the rx and ry here. And uh, in practice, uh, if v3 is not in proper range, it's not a small signal, we have to adjust rx and ry so that we get to the proper uh, acceptable level of voltage. But if it is a small enough signal, then we can adjust this rx potentiometer to zero so that at positive uh, input terminal of op amp 4, we have exactly V3 appearing. So V3 is here if Rx can be set close to zero, uh, assuming that V3 is a small signal, then V3 is here as well. So as the last stage for op amp number 4 and 5, I can write V3 minus VBE of transistor T3. So V3 minus VBE3 gets us to emitter at uh, transistor T3, which is the same as emitter of T4. And that is equal to, again, we have 0 volt and mutual ground 0 here. So 0 minus VBE transistor 4. So again, uh, using uh, Shockley uh, equation for the junction, PN junction voltage and current, VBE is uh, eta VT natural logarithm of the current of junction. Uh, this the, in this case current of the transistor or BJT divided by saturation current. So we end up with, um, as I said, in this case V3 we said is equal to uh, negative NV2 equation 4. So we're going to substitute that here minus NV2 minus and uh, from uh, here this one is eta VT and then natural logarithm of uh, current of transistor 3 divided by the saturation current is equal to minus eta Vt and then natural logarithm current of transistor 4 divided by saturation current here. So what is the next step? Um, we're going to substitute using equation 3 for V2. So if we do that, we end up with um, minus N eta vt um, ln of vn minus eta vt ln of i3 uh, maybe i just shift this one to the other side so if i do that i end up with just simply saying uh, minus eta vt ln i4 over i3 so knowing that given that the junction of the transistors are exactly same type of junction, so they are similar transistors. Now this eta vt cancel out from both sides, uh, negative sign cancel out from both sides, and uh, we get just a natural logarithm of Vn equal to natural logarithm of I4 over I3. Um, and therefore as a result we get just I4 is equal to I3 times Vn. Okay, so uh, in this case, I forgot about N here. So uh, let me just make the correction. So there is an N here that I forgot. That N goes inside to the power. So if you can shift N and put it to the inside as an argument of Ln, as the exponent of the argument of natural logarithm. So it goes here, so we get to the power N. Now we're going to substitute for I4. I4 is uh, the current of transistor 4 in collector, which is the same current going through this resistor R. And uh, since here is 0 volt, here V out, we get the current of transistor 4 is simply V out minus over R. So V out over R is equal to I3 is the current of transistor 3, and that is equal to I. Uh, so is equal to I times Vn to the power n. So the last step in this process is just saying that V out is equal to Ri times Vn to power n. If we set Ri equal to 1, which is a parameter of the circuit and we can do that, then we get exactly to what we wanted, Vn to the power n.
Um, so it just shows that uh, though this circuit has limitation, especially the fact that we have to properly adjust the value of potentiometer Rx and make sure that the Vin is a small signal enough so that V3 can be applied that directly to positive input terminal of, of op amp number 4, but it shows a process in which in, in the input voltage Vin can be raised to an arbitrary power N that is adjustable by the value of potentiometer Nr in this circuit. I hope that this is helpful.